welcome to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Joyous conversations about what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about our one reality. You have nothing to fear. You are eternal and you are perfectly loved. Knowing the truth changes everything. Now, here's Roberta. Welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes and I'm so happy you're with us today. As we approach our 10-year Seek Reality anniversary in June, there are a few guests who have been with us from the really very beginning, and today's guest has been with us for that long. Amazingly, this is Dr. R. Craig Hogan's 39th Seek Reality appearance, and I was curious. So I went back to the beginning, back to June of 2013, and I found that I had done the first three episodes on my own because whoever had heard of Seek Reality back then, and sure enough, Craig was my very first interview guest. He has been with us from the very beginning And that first interview we did was about the first version of his wonderful book, Your Eternal Self. If you haven't read it, please do yourself a favor. Give yourself that gift and read Your Eternal Self. Craig and I really do go back a long way together. And in all of these almost 40 different versions, we have tried never to duplicate any of our topics. So today's topic, too, I think is unique for us. Actually, it's it's not as hard as you'd think for us to never duplicate a topic because there are so many different afterlife topics. We've been writing blog posts for Seek Reality Online, and there are simply no end of topics, no end of ideas that we can write about. So today we're going to talk about something that's going going to be a lot of fun because we're going to talk today about what people do for fun in the afterlife. And you're going to be amazed to hear about all the different kinds of fun things that you're going to get to do when you finally do get around to going to heaven. Craig, welcome. I'm so happy to have you back with us again. I'm happy to be here. You know, it just gets better every time. So wondering how (laughs) much of a high we're going to be getting. But uh, it's been wonderful, and I'm looking forward to today. Oh my goodness! When I was when I was writing a blog post about this, I I, would, I just couldn't get over how many things we are going to get to do when we get there. I don't know why anyone ever bothers to come back and reincarnate because there's so much fun to, stuff to do there. And when we come back here, it gets serious. It's just it's just like too bad that we come back, but we're we're hungry to grow spiritually and get to do even more fun stuff there. So we eventually do decide to reincarnate. But first, I think the most important thing for people to understand is that when we go home, we 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 basically drop our body. We, we become attached to our bodies here, let's say. So we, we hate the idea that we have to drop the body we got used to. But talk about our new body. When we get there, what is it that's wonderful about our new bodies that we get when we go home? The new bodies we have are just as substantial. They're exactly the same as the bodies that we're in now, except that they're us in our prime. They're uh, in our 20s or 30s. They are healthy and there are no weights. It uh, doesn't feel like you're tired or that you feel anything oppressing you. Uh, the body is perfectly fine. Uh, and the reason that we're, it's in the 20s or 30s is because we have that desire or expectation, even though we don't say it. So we don't have to ask for that kind of a body. It's the fact that in our minds, in our desires, we want to be at that level. We want to be at that age. And so our universal intelligence simply gives it to us. We're simply there. As with so many things in the life after this life, we don't have to ask for them. They're there because we want them. They're there because we deeply feel that way. And so if someone then goes to the next life and they've lived in the Sahara and they're used to a a Bedouin kind of an existence, or if there were an an Inuit Eskimo and they're used to that kind of an existence, then their life in the next life then is just like that. So it's what they expect to to have happen and whatever their deepest desires are, they're there. And so one of them is the body. We have wonderful healthy, fulfilled bodies. There are no old people in the life after this life. There are no old people ailments in the life after this life. We continue our lives healthy and happy there. And and we're beautiful too. I mean, I know exactly how I want to look there. 
I can hardly wait. Um, however you want to look is how you get to look. Um, you you don't have to. Uh, in fact, there, there's I remember reading some wonderful stories. Uh, people people want to look. They want to be blonde, for example. They they want to look the way they looked in a, in a previous lifetime. They get to look that way then. So um, you know you can look forward to that. And as you point out, you never tire. So if there are things you enjoy doing that require that you have a lot of stamina or a lot of energy. Uh, you can look that way then. It's never nighttime, you're, you're, so that you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to rest. Usually, people take a nap when they first get there. That, that lasts a little while. After that, you don't have to sleep again. You don't have to eat. So that there's plenty of time, and there's no time there too. So there's no. There's plenty of non-time to do whatever you feel like doing. So let's get to it and talk about some of the fun things people do. Yeah, there are wonderful things that people do there. The things that the people do then are, are not simply recreational. There are pe people want to want to grow. They want to become better. If you can imagine wanting to become so loving that uh, you were the essence of love, that the love permeated your body, and and what a wonderful feeling that would be. The people around you would be doing the same thing. They would be trying to make their their some, themselves permeated with love. And so there's still a lot of growth. We are uh, trying to grow then in the life after this life. But at the same time, there are these recreational things that we can do, the things that we had never been able to do when we were on the earth plane. We can do them there. We, we simply have to let ourselves know that we're interested in it. And when we become interested in it, it's just there. So we will have whatever it is that we want for our recreation. And that can be anything uh, from playing ball the way we used to on the earth plane with uh, groups of other people who also wanted to play ball. There are sports car enthusiasts uh, on the life after this life. And they have come together and they look at the sports cars that they have developed. They developed their own sports cars there. And then they, they can race the sports cars. They're, they go by themselves because of the intent of the person who's riding. The person doesn't have to put gasoline in. There are no pollutants in the atmosphere. They're simply, they simply go by the intent. But everything else is exactly the same. The sound is the same. The experience is the same. And so we can have any of those experiences just because we want to have them. There are other kinds of vehicles too. People um, uh, talk. There. In fact, um, I, I've had um, visions when I was there uh, in, in the in the astral of of these funny little vehicles um, operated by mind, um, little cars, little little airplanes, <laughs> and little boats operated by mind um, that that people, in, as you point out. They don't. There's no exhaust because they're operated by mind. So if there's if, if you it it, it's, it puts me in mind of children and and the the little vehicles that they use, whatever people feel like playing with, they get to play with there. It, it's it's very liberating to think that that people and this was especially important. Um, I think back a hundred years ago, when there were a lot of poor people who were dying, they 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 got to play with things that they never did get to play with. Um, when they when they it was really really playtime when they when they graduated and came back home. Um, another thing they got to do was take lessons, um, which which they never got to do when they were poor. Um, music lessons. They got to take music lessons, piano lessons from Mozart. Think about that, um, and and violin lessons from from uh, experts. And our minds are so much greater because we 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 um, when when we first get back home, we 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 reunite with most of our mind which we had left behind. As you point out. We, we we have grown so much when we first get home that we're 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 more advanced spiritually, but it also means that we've learned more and and we have an opportunity then to learn more when we get back home as well. But sometimes we're using that to learn things when we get there and learn things from experts. Yep. Sometimes 
when children come here, they suddenly have they 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 are learning. They're able to learn piano so well with that at the end of the first year of, of piano lessons, they're playing concerts. Why is that possible? Well, it's because when they first got back to the afterlife, they took lessons from experts in piano or in violin, and and so suddenly they're they're able or or. They were learning from Michelangelo how to paint. People don't understand that, that they, you can take le- that kind of lesson there. What are other some other kinds of lessons that, that people yeah. might be able to take there? Yeah, and there are they, they learn more easily. Uh, and they also recall more things from the earth plane. So the uh, things that they might have forgotten. And they do remember there. So if they, if they were an artisan of some sort of a performer, many of the things that they had learned on the earth plane, they will remember better and perform better. And then they'll add to them on the next plane of life. And those who were masters of their crafts, mm-hmm. such as Mozart, then would continue them. They do continue them on the next plane of life. And then the interesting thing is they say that they, they search out and they find performers who are still on the earth plane. And they take them under their wing. They make them into apprentices so that they do, through them, continue their music work on the earth plane. And the person then very often is simply not aware of it, just doesn't realize that they're being inspired by the, by Mozart and the other side. Chopin came through in Leslie Flint's seances and described coming through to a, a woman uh, who he was inspiring, who he was working with and helping her in her performance and in, in her writing. And he d- d- describes her name as Rosie Greet. And he yeah. describes how he did it. He decides to describe uh, spending time with her. When a person on this side of life is a, a virtuoso, then you can expect that there probably is someone helping them from the life after this life. So what we can do there when we when we go there, our recreation is not only the kinds of things that we can do there, but it's in this wonderful, exhilarating feeling that we can help somebody on the earth plane to become better at their craft. And so then we, we are, each one of us has helpers and people who are interested in us for one reason or another, and they will help us to advance. Scientists are receiving inspiration from the life after this life. Performers are receiving inspiration. And we don't realize that Marie Curie came through in the Leslie Flint seance, and she said she was amazed when she went to the other side that how much she had been inspired, how much of what she had done had been a result of inspiration because she realized that they told her then how they had helped her along the way in her exploration of radium and and radioactivity. And so we are inspired by those people who are living in the life after this life, and they're just loving it. They're just really enjoying it. I mean, if you can imagine how wonderful it is to to have a virtuoso, uh, someone whom whom you're interested in, that doesn't have to be a virtuoso. It can be simply someone who is better at their craft or a better bricklayer you know, or, or they're a better housewife. And the person on the next plane of life is, is working with them and helping them. And what an exhilarating feeling to see them succeed, to see what they're doing come to fruition. Uh, and we on this side have to take that and, and realize that that's true and then be open to the guidance, be open to these hints and, and prods and, and probes that will help us as we perform whatever it is that we're doing. If we're open to it, then we'll receive them. So people then on on the next plane of life who uh, are performing, for instance, uh, uh, learning to play the piano, they do, as you say, they they learn to play it more quickly. It's rather like Groundhog Day, where you just uh, you, you <laughs> just keep coming back to the piano and then you get better and better at it and. And as you become better and better at it, then you find that it it comes easily to you and you can enjoy doing the things that you had always wanted to do that you couldn't do when you were on the earth plane. I mean, I've actually seen that. I had I had a child who was taking lessons and there was a child in the in the class who was just just took took it took to it so quickly and it was clear to me although I, I couldn't explain it to the teacher that that child had picked it up you know before birth there was just no other way explanation for why this child could play piano so well without any you know just suddenly and, and amazingly um 
but but it is just phenomenal how how it it happens going back and forth life after life so amazing yeah and then as we do that as we pick up the skills as we learn those skills then we can go on and learn something else if we want to uh the entire world is open to us and it isn't just that that, that everything is just beautiful and wonderful and we have these exciting times every day of our lives we are growing and we are becoming more the person we wish we could be to become that person who is so full of love and compassion for other people that the other people respond to it, that we, we are regarded and we can grow into that. We can become that. Now, it's possible to become that while we're on the earth plane. Eventually, you know, hopefully humankind will will evolve to the point at which we're more loving and compassionate and everybody is. But as it stands right now, even when we're in the crucible, when there are people who are hostile and violent at the same time as people who are loving, we as individuals then can grow in love and compassion. And then we carry that through into the next life and become even more so there. So everything that we do in this life, we build upon it in the next life to become more of the kind of person that we want to become, ideally that that wonderful person that we would like to be, we can continue to grow on the next plane of life. Yeah, there's a much more smooth continuum between here and there and here and there and back and forth than we even imagine. We tend to think there's a break, but there is no really no break at all. Yeah, there is no veil. and The veil doesn't exist. It's only the, that people are, have difficulty in uh, understanding the fact that it's seamless. There is no veil. We go on to the next level of life, and and it's as though we can we know that we learn about the stages of life, and we have infancy and childhood, adolescence, young adulthood, maturity, and and old age. And there really is another stage of life, and and sooner or later, then the schools are going to teach it. The next stage of life is the life in the life after this life. And that has to be another stage of life. It's just seamless. We go into it and we become more the person we've always wanted to become. And the other thing about it is it's not only that we have wonderful recreational things to do in the the next life. We have a sense of purpose. So many people here on the earth plane have no sense of purpose. They feel like their life is meaningless. They that they don't they wonder why they're here at all uh, and many of them are lonely uh, they just don't have a companionship and and uh, there are many deaths that occur because simply a loneliness in the net life after this life there is no loneliness people come together their houses many of them don't even have doors on them but if they have doors they're never locked and the people can gather together, they gather together often, and they have camaraderie, and it's just a joyous time because there is a sense of, of com- camaraderie with everybody, with a, with a gathering that we have, and nobody feels lonely, and everyone has a sense of purpose. You know what your life is about. You know what you're going towards. And and so every day of your life, then you will go towards whatever that goal is that you most earnestly want to have happen in your life. And so the, the next life then is filled with purpose and with love. And that's part of what makes it so wonderful. It really is that there's it's a deep there's a deeply joyous feeling to it all. But it really is playtime. And there's a lot, there's one of the things that that we know about is that a lot of people uh, do a lot of exploration. They do a lot of historical exploration and exploration of their personal histories, too. There are big libraries where people uh, go to um, explore their past lives. People, a lot of people ask me about past lives. They, you know, are they going to know more about their own past lives? And and uh, and yes, you can you can do that. They, there are big libraries where you can explore the the uh, life review uh, holograms of of your past lives and learn more about what those were. And um, you can also um, there are are um, but. The, I, I don't know how you would describe them. Uh, there, there. We, we know that there are some. Um, there, there's a Dickens town, and there's a Wild West town, and we think there, there's a 1950s town where you can literally go and and be part of and play at being in these 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 previous places as if you were, you know, you dress up as and you are part of these towns. 
um, it, it's, and, and uh, as if you as if you were in these these towns. Yeah. Um, the in- interesting all- thing that- about the Dickens, yeah, the the characters who are in Dickens books uh, actually have a life there, uh, yeah. and the reason they have a life is because there's so many people who have read Dickens that they now there's a mass consciousness. It's like it's we know this person, we we know the Artful Dodger, and uh, and as a result of that, then they there is a place where they are. Uh, and as you say, that's in, in Dickens Place or Dickens Town. And there the characters are alive and you could converse with them and you could spend time with them uh, because of the fact that they have a, a life of their own. They are not like earth beings. They're not like humans. They are. They have the life of their own because we expect them to be there. We know about the characters and we love the characters. And because of that, then they have a life of their own. And so we can go there. We can also, if we want to, we can go to the libraries. There are libraries with every book, every article that has ever been written. But we don't have to read the books. You don't have to open up the book and look at it. You can take down a book if you feel like it, and then you can just close your eyes, and the author will come to you and will tell you what was in the book. And uh, and will tell you the true intention, because we don't get the author's intention when we read a book. But you'll get the author's intention when you look at the book. Um, and all these things that we know about the life after this life, we're getting this, all of this information from people who are living there. You know, it, 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 these sound really like they're just fantastic, like they're, they're so unusual. You know, it's how, how could you know these things are true? We get all of the information. Everything that we say is coming from sources in the life after this life, and they're corroborated. So it's more than one person who's saying them, even though they sound fantastical. And uh, and so one of the things is these books that pe- that will read themselves to people that you don't have to <laughs> worry about reading, opening the book, and taking it home with you. And and uh, so these tremendous libraries are there, and everything is available that has ever been written. It it does seem sort of unbelievable. Uh, there there also also seems to be something like the reenactment of famous historical events that that happens. I don't know if the, the is the actual characters or or a mimic of the characters, but um, famous historical events, for example, from the history of the United States, somehow seems to be something that that happens too, um, and and we we get to observe it. Um, yeah, we're able to go back and actually more than observe it, we get to have the feelings, um, all of the sentiments of the people involved on both sides of, if there is a conflict. Uh, and so we actually feel those feelings. We can go into them. And, and the reason for that is that it's part of our growth, because the more we understand those people who were adversaries, the more we understand their different points of view, the more we mature, the more we become wise about people and about about life. And as a result of that, then we're able to go into these circumstances, explore them, be part of them. Um, we can't actually go into them as though they were on the earth plane. We're not actually going back to those things that are happening on the earth plane. We're actually having a reenactment of them. And in uh, and, and that way, then we can be part of them because it's just a reenactment. But uh, we then will be able to do that and we'll be able to go back to our own lives and re-experience some things that have happened in our own lives uh, in a reenactment of them. But these reenactments are not cerebral. They're not just intellectual. They are full of visceral emotions. They're, they're everything that we had wanted to experience before or didn't experience in a circumstance. Then we can go back and we can go through that. And so we, and we can have uh, any of the actors or, or any of the authors uh, from who, whom we knew uh, can come to us. There, there's one uh, description of a presentation that was being given, and I think this is in Anthony Borgia's book, Life in the World Unseen, and uh, Martin Luther was going to be coming and speaking to the crowd. <laughs> and so we can we can experience having Martin Luther there. Yeah. Uh, and it actually was Martin Luther who, who was speaking to the crowd. Quite amazing. Mm-hmm. My own spirit guide was uh, in one of his lifetimes was Thomas Jefferson. He griped to me that he um, had people were always seeking him out. Who one of the for some people on their bucket list when they first got there was actually ask, asking 
he said everybody who has a, had a previous lifetime as a as a historical figure was being sought out all the time and people were asking him questions and that irritated him tremendously. So <laughs> I, yeah. I guess there are downsides to having ever been famous because you got sought out all the time. Yeah. And, so they yeah. come in and do lectures and the lectures <laughs> are for vast audiences. So it isn't, you know, a little group of seven or eight people who come together, yeah. that, that, but uh, people do come together as small groups of seven or eight people and they do have speakers who, who come in, but for somebody like Martin Luther, that would be before a vast crowd. Yeah. Uh, and they have wonderful concerts where huge uh, auditoriums where they have conferences, um, concerts, and the auditoriums uh, very often don't have walls. Uh, but the auditoriums. Yeah, because uh, there's no have, point. They have no weather. No it's always point, daytime. Right. So. right. It's right. always ambient, ambient temperature. Um, and, yeah. uh, the, but they still, as, as you said in in uh, your book um, uh, with Mikey, uh, if they want to have snow, there are places that they have snow. Yes, you you, you can have so, you can have weather if you want it. Yes. Yeah, you can have you can go to those places where the weather is, and you can go snowboarding the way that Mikey did is going snowboarding yes. on the other side, and and you can go skiing, and you can have all of those experiences you want to have. You all have of the environment. Yes. Yeah. All of the environments from the Earth plane are available there if we want to have them. And we don't have to ask for them. We don't have to say, would you arrange to have a little bit of snow for tomorrow? Uh, <laughs> we don't have to do that. It's simply that we want to go snowboarding. And so we just know that we go off to this part of the country. We can yeah. travel there. We don't have to travel there, though. All we have to do is intend to be there. So we can yes. say, travel I is by be... mind and is instantaneous yeah. wherever you That's want to right. go. That's right. That's and, right. And it's still your it's still your body. And people have difficulty understanding that we're we're not ethereal. We're not wisps of, of vapor. Uh, yeah. We still have our very solid bodies, just exactly the same way we do in the Earth plane. It's just that when we intend to be somewhere, we find that we are there, and our bodies are there too. You know, and, and it's just uh, amazing we can how participate this works. in whatever it is we want to participate yes. in. And that informs us too about this life. So the fact that we know about all of these things and the life after this life, that tells us about this life, about the fact that we are creating this life. We are creators of this life in the same way. We expect things to be in a certain way, and they are that way. If people were not that, cruel that's and That's a violent, very important point. Yeah. So please say that yeah. again, because it's very important people understand that. Say that again, yeah. Craig. We are creating our reality. If we didn't want things to be this way, then, then we wouldn't have to have them this way as humanity. If, if all of humanity were loving and kind and compassionate, then there would be no diseases. Diseases are not a necessary part of the earth plane. There would be no conflicts. There would be no violence. Everyone would live together in love, peace, and joy. The fact that we don't do that now is only because of the fact that we're choosing not to. When I say we, I mean all of humanity. Uh, but if we come to that point, and that's what our goal is, our mission that, that we have for Seek Reality Online is, is to help people to grow, to become more like that, so that the more people who become like that, the more humanity changes, the more humanity changes, the more the world change, changes. Gaia actually changes. The, the, all of the atmosphere then changes. So uh, we know that from the life out of this life, if somebody wants to go snowboarding, the snow is just, uh, just there. They just intend to be wherever that is. Uh, and uh, that, is, that shows us the fact that we are responsible for our own reality. Very amazing and very true. Absolutely true. Once yeah. humankind decides that they want a better reality, their better reality will be here and it'll be instantaneous. We just yeah. have to make that decision. Yeah, and there is research to show that that's true, too. There's a, a, an effect called the Maharishi effect. And the Maharishi effect was discovered and has, has been uh, replicated many times now uh, in Israel, in the United States, in other countries. And the Maharishi effect is when a community, and a location, has a group of people, a sizable group of people, one or two percent of the people, who meditate daily and meditates uh, focusing upon the, the well-being of the community, there is a notable, uh, discernible decrease in violence, 
decrease in violent crimes. There's an increase in inventions and other creative sorts of things. And you can see it in the statistics uh, for that location. That they, the studies have been done in, in Israel. They've been done in the United States, in Washington, D.C. And consistently it shows that when a group of people focus their love and compassion on an area, it changes that area. It changes what happens to those people. So you can imagine what would happen. That's 1% or 2%. What would happen if it was 60%? Of the people in the area. What would happen if it was 90% of the people in an area? <laughs> what effect would that have upon the area? What on, on violence, on, on crime, uh, on inventions and wonderful things that were being created? Uh, and so we know from our, our the understanding from what we have learned from the other side, from the next life, we learn how that up, uh, affects life on this plane, on this plane of life. This is just a spiritual plane. We're living in a spiritual plane. Earth is a spiritual plane. And the next life is just another spiritual plane. And so the same rules that apply here, there apply here. And so we can learn many things. And this is where science is really backward uh, right now because of the fact that it doesn't have that information from the life after this life. They don't have that comparison, so they can't apply it to this life. And that makes uh, puts them at, at a real disadvantage in understanding life on this side of life. They, they're actually foolish. They refuse uh -huh. to accept the fact that matter is essentially um, uh, non-material. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's kind of fundamental. Uh, yeah. And it's something... That, that was understood very well by um, the, the leading lights, Max Planck and uh, Albert Einstein understood it very well, but uh, it is not understood today. So science has actually gone backward. It's, yeah, it's regret. Max Planck actually was the one who referred to the matrix uh, yes. and, uh, and, and the fact that, that we're in a matrix. And yes, the, all of the founders of the quantum mechanics knew, based upon what they understood about science about quantum mechanics they knew that the only explanation for what they were seeing for what they were, were getting from quantum mechanics and from all their explorations was that life is very different like that life is being created that we are instrumental that we are part of that we are co-creating this existence yep <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he essentially, I, I believe Max Planck understood that he had discovered um, consciousness and the consciousness is fundamental. He said, we cannot get behind consciousness. And mm -hmm. uh, but that's something. And, yet, and we still have uh, materialist science attempting to discover a source of consciousness inside the human brain and spending a billion dollars, wasting a billion dollars trying to find that source of consciousness inside the human brain, which is the silliest effort ever made by humankind and going back to to the stone age the silliest effort yeah. ever made yeah yeah but, and what's what's really silly about it is the fact that they're not finding it and, <laughs> and they keep looking and keep looking but they're and, undaunted, and, they're and, isn't and they just and they just keep looking yeah. and, and the fact that they won't then open their eyes and say well maybe we have to accept an alternate reality Maybe we have to look somewhere else for it. It's not we can't find it in the brain, and so as a result of that, let's look at someplace else. Maybe these guys who are talking from the afterlife, maybe they have the the right idea. Maybe they they know why we're not finding consciousness in the brain. Uh, the brain, uh, two independent researchers, one a computer science and one a neuroscientist, did their their research independent of each other. And they discovered that the, the brain could hold no more than an hour of television uh, mm -hmm. at the rate at which the brain receives and, and uh, uses information and stores information. Uh, and so the brain is, could not have all of that knowledge. Uh, Kim Peek, uh, who, who was uh, the basis for the movie Rain Man, uh, was able to read a book and he could remember every word in the book. And he had 7,000 books that he recalled. <laughs> and how could that happen in the brain? Where could that be in the brain? Of course, well, it's not in the brain. Yeah. And so we know not. that that's true. They just have to stop looking in the brain to find it because it's not there. Because it's not there. No, I mean, it's it's the whole thing is, we, it would be amusing if it were not so sad. But nonetheless, we press on. And um but but when when we get when we eventually do all go home and and uh, 
back to our real lives, which is what go, what dying here is. We become alive there again. And uh, there are many more things to do. We haven't even started to talk about uh, travel. Uh, the, 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 the amount of traveling we're able to do is absolutely boggling. The, the great problem with traveling to get anywhere very far away is the process of travel. But when you can be anywhere you want to be instantaneously, which is the what happens when once we go home, the the tr possibilities of travel are absolutely boggling. Um, one of the things that that I discovered, and I'm sure you did too, in the process of our doing afterlife research, is that we can travel in, in travel not just in the the material universe, but the, in other realities, other dimensions, and the things that we could see were absolutely unbelievable um quite uh, there, there were hints of things um that that came from um in in just just little hints of things that came in in, in our the process of doing afterlife research that were quite delicious and quite amazing because we're the bodies we have there are indestructible you know you can't mikey morgan tells us that he can can uh, uh snowboard like an olympian because he, that body is indestructible he's not afraid of getting hurt and if also of course the snow is not cold so it, it's just it's just uh it's unbelievable the things you can do there but also you can go anywhere you want in in not just this dimension and but also other dimensions and explore because you're not afraid of anything because your body's indestructible yeah, i don't know if one of the things tales to tell but uh, for, uh, uh, but but to, to talk a little bit about travel we don't really have much time left actually yeah. in this segment yeah and yeah, as you say, we can travel anywhere. We can travel between dimensions. One of the things that happens is that when people then make the transition, then they're with a guide or with their loved ones there, and, and they may say to themselves suddenly, oh my gosh, what about my family? You know, they're back there and I've just left them, and immediately they're transported there simply because they have thought of them, simply because they, they are concerned about them, immediately transformed to the earth plane. And so people are able to go to the Earth plane at any time. Uh, they're able to go, people can go to lower level planes. In other words, they, they, they can't go to higher level planes unless they are attuned to that level. But they can go to lower level planes anytime they want to. And one of them is to go back to the Earth plane, spend time on the Earth plane with their loved ones, go to places on the Earth plane that they would have liked to have gone before. Uh, and they can explore. Uh, that most of the time, they don't care about the Earth plane anymore, so they they won't come back except for their loved ones. Except when their loved ones are thinking about them, uh, they instantly can be there, standing in the midst of them when they're at a celebration, they're at a wedding, they're they're at a birthday party, uh, and so then travel then to other dimensions uh, includes other worlds. So we're able to go on to other worlds and explore them. Uh, in, in the life after this life. The purpose isn't just for recreation. The purpose is because we're learning. We're advancing. We never stop learning. We never stop advancing. We're becoming more of that person whom we ideally want to become once we realize that the entire universe is open to us. And so, we, as you said, we can travel to any dimension. It's quite quite amazing, and it's quite exciting. Um, the the thing, and you, you you may not remember in detail what you've seen, but you re retain the flavor of it. The the fact that you've seen other worlds, and and uh, it it it's some people become quite addicted to traveling that way. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I I have little, but when I think about it, I I can remember little little snippets of things I've seen. I I look forward to doing more of it when, when I get get home again. Yeah, yeah, and people are actually doing that now. Uh, to some extent, uh, if the out-of-body experiencers, such as uh, Jurgen Zwi, uh, who go out of body, or, or Cyrus Kirkpatrick, um, who go out of body, body and spend time uh, out of the body, that's a flavor. It's just a, a, a semblance of what they're able to do, and they're able to go to other dimensions. They're able to speak to people there. They're, they're able to spend time with them. So we, even on the earth plane, we know that that's true. But then when we go on to the life after this life, there are no constraints. And we're able to no, do that no. as much as we want to. And the purpose of being yeah. able to do that is because it becomes an opportunity for us to grow, to continue growing. Wow. If people want to contact you, Craig, what's the easiest way to do that? 
Um, I really invite people to contact uh, me. Uh, you can go on uh, Seekreality. Uh, dot com and you will see the contact there and if you will send me uh, an email I certainly would respond to it but you if you can remember this is my email is Craig at seekreality dot com and I invite you to ask any questions that you would and I will answer them for you and what do you want people well, to take so, away, take away from from our conversation today. Yeah, um, and I, I wanted to mention also that um, you and I, then are, are every Monday night, we are online, or we are on, uh, having Zoom sessions. Uh, so every Monday night, and we alternate, Roberta has one Monday, and I have the next Monday, and we're on Zoom sessions where we will answer questions for people. So any Zoom, any member of SeekReality.com is able to get on and, and we will answer the questions there. So what I, what I want people to take away from this is that we have every opportunity in the universe available to us. We have no limits. People believe they have limits and so they act as though they have limits. It's rather like believing that you uh, you have an amputated leg. Uh, that's what happens when people go into the life after this life. If their leg was amputated uh, when they were on the earth plane, they go through a long period of time in which they still think they have an amputated leg. Uh, because they, it's only because they think that they just feel that it, we feel that we're constrained we feel that we can't be that person we want to be while we're on the earth plane the whole universe is open to us though and all we have to do is open ourselves to it go forward and realizing that that's true and we can do anything that we want to do oh amen to that our our, mm -hmm. our eternity is unlimited we have unlimited time unlimited space and frankly, we ourselves as an eternal, unlimited, immortal, and ultimately powerful beings are unlimited. And thank you so much, Craig. It's always such a thrill to talk with you. It's been wonderful. I've enjoyed it. And again, we've come to the end of our time. This has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. I'm so happy you could be with us today. Please never forget that you are a powerful, eternal being. You never began. You never will end. And when you really get what that means, it changes everything in your life for the better. Our guest next week will be Carol and Mikey Morgan, and he'll be with us for the 19th time. And actually, Carol and Mikey also were my guests during those first few episodes of Seek Reality 10 years ago this coming June. They followed right after Craig, and that was not long after I'd met Carol, actually, at my first Afterlife Conference. Visiting with Carol and Mikey is always fun and always surprising, so please be sure to join us next week. And this week, we've been talking with our wonderful friend, Dr. R. Craig Hogan, who's been with us for the 39th time. And his record is perfect. He always has something different to talk with us about. This time, it's been what some of our, frankly, most fun things to do in our whole lives are. And they happen not when we're here, but when we're there. You have no idea how wonderful it is to be home again because our horizons expand so much when we don't have to work, we don't have to eat, we don't have to sleep, we don't have to do anything, but enrich our lives among the people that we truly love. And there is nothing to fear. Can you imagine nothing to fear, nothing to worry about? And the very atmosphere is love all around us. What could be better? It's beautiful there. You're going to have the time of your life when, when you finally do get to go home. But you've got, meanwhile, you've got spiritual growth here. This is where we grow spiritually. We consolidate that growth when we go home. And that's when we really, really do have fun. And meanwhile, speaking of going home, it's time once again to mention the fact that Seek Reality Online is our one-stop shop for everything about learning the most we can while we're here about what it's really like there. Go to Seek Reality Online, seekreality.com, and learn everything you possibly can learn about what it's like once you, once you finally have the opportunity to go home, to learn, to grow spiritually. Seekreality.com is your one-stop shop for everything you possibly can learn about the afterlife. Your reality really is eternal.
And as you know, my nonfiction books are Liberating Jesus, My Thomas, The Fun of Dying, The Fun of Staying in Touch, The Fun of Growing Forever, The Fun of Living Together, and The Fun of Loving Jesus, Embracing the Christianity that Jesus Taught. For young children, there's the fun of meeting Jesus, and you can order all these books through bookstores or on Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com, and most of the adult books, except the latest one, are also available as audiobooks. Past episodes of SeekReality.com are available wherever podcasts are found, and many people will just listen through the Seek Reality app, app you can always find for free wherever free apps are available. And meanwhile, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Please enjoy and make the most of this coming week in our one reality, always knowing, never forgetting that you are a powerful, eternal being. And you, in particular, most of all in the entire universe, you are infinitely loved. You've been listening to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Roberta blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Join us every week as we explore what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about the one reality we all share. Knowing the truth changes everything.